Today's game is an attacking brilliancy that Magnus Carlsen plays against fellow Super Grandmaster Jeffrey Zhang, both rated over 2,700, Carlsen over 2,800. And uh, Carlsen is uh, starting to attack more and more. He's not the end game grinder like he used to be, particularly in rapid games like this one. He's really having opposite sides casting and really going for it. Let's take a look. D4 was Magnus's move. He has white. Jeffrey Zhang has black. Knight f6, knight c3, d5, and bishop to f4, the Jobaba London system. Uh, a system opening that's really built on attacking the opponent. e6, and he plays e3. The main move here, probably these days, is knight to b5, going immediately after the c7 pawn. Magnus plays e3, and now bishop to b4, sort of a a well-known equalizing line. But let me say, in the Jobaba London, the question isn't whether black can equalize. They can. The question is, can white get an attacking position that's going to make them uncomfortable? Knight g to e2 to defend that. Knight, castles, and a3. Kicking the bishop, you're going to have to make a decision. Jeffrey Zhang decides to return the bishop back to e7. Now, white's knights here are awkwardly placed. So Magnus makes the decision to reroute the king's knight. He goes back to the original square, g1, so he can bring that knight out to a better square, uh, f3. c5 immediately attacking the center, the right approach, knight f3, and now knight to h5. And Magnus says, you can have the bishop, but I want to control those central dark squares. He takes the pawn at c5, knight takes bishop, pawn takes knight, and you can see here Magnus has control over e5 with the pawn along with the knight. The bishop retakes on c5, and now bishop to d3. And white has some very natural attacking moves in this position. The knight can go to g5, the queen can go to h5, the bishop is aiming at h7. The only issue here is this knight on c3 would probably have to be rerouted in order to become active. It doesn't have a natural a landing square. And Jeffrey Zhang plays g6. Strong idea. Blunting the bishop at d3, the queen can no longer access h5. It weakens his dark squares a bit. But since white no longer has a dark squared bishop, he could probably get away with that. The only problem is, by playing g6, he creates a hook. And Magnus hasn't castled yet. The rook is still on h1, so he wants to play h4, h5 to open up that h-file. Makes a lot of sense. Knight to c6, h5. And here Jeffrey Zhang plays queen to f6. He attacks the f4 pawn, but also brings his queen over to the king's side for added defense. Magnus plays queen to d2, defending that pawn, and now e5. And uh, Jeffrey Zhang is trying to open the center with Magnus's king still in the middle of the board, which makes good strategic sense, but this is really a mistake. And the reason why is that the d5 pawn is now undefended. Not only does Magnus grab a central pawn, but he now solves the problem of the c3 knight, which was his worst placed piece. Now it's going to be a well placed piece. So this was definitely premature and uh, a mistake. A knight takes d5. It's easy to make mistakes against the Jobaba London because white's attacking play is so simple. By the way, if you're uh, enjoying this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification for future videos. Uh, queen to d6, hitting the knight. The bishop goes to c4. There was another good attacking concept here. Pawn takes g6, and the black were to, to try to take the knight. Then pawn takes f7 is really strong from white. If he retakes with the queen, then bishop h7 check, defended by the rook, of course, at h1. And if the king moves up f5, allowing the queen entry into h6, and white has a winning attack, if instead of taking with the queen, he takes with the rook, then bishop h7 reveals a, an attack on the queen at d5, and, and the queen would be lost. So that was another good attacking idea. But Magnus plays bishop to c4, again, putting some x-ray pressure along this diagonal, aiming at the king, making it hard to move the f7 pawn. b5. This bishop is such a problem that Jeffrey wants it off of this powerful diagonal. Uh, bishop a2 is played by Magnus. He wants to keep it on, but what if he just takes the pawn? Well, in that case, knight to d4, attacking the knight on d4, and then bishop goes back to defend, then bishop to b7, and white may still be a bit better here, but you can see black is beginning to get active, the light square bishop is on the uh, long diagonal, and uh, Magnus didn't want that, so he plays the bishop back to a2. Ef4 was played, the computer likes knight to d4 here, pawn takes f4, and now long castling. And Magnus has created a situation with opposite sides castling. Black's on the king's side, white's on the queen's side. Also, he has x-ray pressure against this queen on d6 and strong control over the d-file. b4, Jeffrey Zhang trying to open up lines against Magnus's king. 
pawn takes g6, and here he takes with the h pawn. Taking with the f pawn would be a disaster because of knight to f6 double check because it's a discovered check by the bishop, and when the king moves, mate uh, would soon follow. So he takes with the h pawn instead, and now knight to g5. Another idea, rook to h4. The idea you just bring the other rook and double on the h file, also strong. But the idea behind knight to g5 is to play this knight back to e4. It hits the queen, and both knights are aiming at this f6 square. Knight on f6, if it was protected, would be an unbelievable tool for white. So knight to e4 is the threat. Jeffrey Zhang plays bishop to f5 to keep that knight out of e4. So Magnus decides to get to f6 through a different route. He plays knight to h7 so that the knight can go to f6. Another possibility was g4. Uh, and if he takes, then he could play knight to h7, and the queen could go to h6. That was another idea. Uh, knight to h7, rook f to d8, trying to create at least a little bit of pressure on the d file. If bishop to d4 to guard f6, which was a, an interesting idea, then g4 is strong. And if bishop takes g4, queen d4, sacrificing the queen, Knight takes d4, knight hf6, check. I mean, these are beautiful tactics, an unbelievable queen sacrifice. If he plays king to, king to g7, then rook to h7 is simply checkmate at the end of the game. Uh, if he gives back the queen, which he obviously would have to do, then knight f6, king g7, and you just take the bishop at g4 and uh, whites up a whole minor piece here. He's got that extra bishop there at a2. Uh, so bishop to d4, trying to control f6 does not work. The rook goes to d8, knight h to f6, check. If the king goes to g7, then this would follow, rook h7, and then rook d to h1, and there's no way to avoid mate. White can make, black can make some delaying moves, but mate is forced uh, after rook to h8. In this position, the king goes to f8, but then rook to h8, check, king g7, rook h7, check, king f8, and now rook d to f1, creating the same scenario. Now, in this position, Jeffrey Zhang resigned, but you have to see what the mating process is here. It's really beautiful. Uh, the correct move here is a g5. The idea is that this bishop on f5 uh, wants to control the h7 square to prevent the mating pattern that we looked at. So rook to h8 check, king g7, but still rook 1 to h7 check, forcing the capture of the rook Rook h7, king f8, same process, but then queen to d3. And now the threat is this. Rook to h8 check, king to g7, queen to h7 mate, and there's nothing black can do. Uh, the game is over. That is why in this position, Jeffrey Zhang went ahead and resigned. Now, even after this great attacking game for Magnus Carlsen, there are still some great chess you're missing out on. If you want to see another great game for Magnus, be sure to check out this video right here. I think you're going to enjoy it.